when Returnal was first revealed during the PlayStation Showcase, I wasn't particularly excited to be perfectly honest. The main reason is simply because it's a game developed by Housemark, the same studio behind the critically acclaimed Super Stardust and Resogun, and as much as I can recognize the incredible quality of these games, they were just not for me. And although story did seem to play a much bigger role this time around, I still thought that Returnal was going to be another bullet hell shooter with nothing new to really grab me personally. And even if you can clearly recognize the DNA of each of those games inside Returnal, I have to say that Housemark's latest title really took me by surprise because this is freaking brilliant. So today we're going to be diving into Returnal, look at its positives, but also talk about the small controversy surrounding it. I'm gonna get into that during the second half of this video, so hopefully you'll have a much better idea of what you're getting into. So my name is Michael and this is my review of Returnal. After crash landing on a shape-shifting world, Astro Scout Selene must search through the barren landscape of an ancient civilization for her escape. Isolated and alone, she finds herself fighting tooth and nail for survival, again and again she's defeated, forced to restart her journey every time she dies. Yes, in case you didn't know already, this is a roguelike, which means that when you die, you go back to the start and lose almost everything you collected. Yikes. But what's cool is that this idea is not just a gameplay concept, it's actually part of the story itself. Not only is Selene trapped in a time loop, but she's also the victim of an ever-changing landscape who seemingly messes with her mind by bringing elements from her past and future into the present. Throughout your journey, you will stumble on audio logs left by Selene's past and future selves, and sometimes you'll even get glimpses of her descent into madness, a fate that her present self is trying to avoid at all costs. I was very surprised by the quality of the narrative here. Celine is a very interesting protagonist and her unrelentless desire to unravel the mysteries and break the cycle she's stuck into is enough to keep you going. While most of the game is from a third person perspective, some story segments will actually be in first person. Through these very PT inspired sequences, the game steps into horror territory and explores Celine's past on Earth. Keep in mind that the story is very cryptic, so if the storytelling of From Software games usually puts you off, you might not really enjoy this one either, even if Returnal remains more plot driven than Bloodborne, for example. Although even if I found Selene's journey very compelling, what I particularly fell in love with was the world Housemark created. Returnal's world is menacing, mythic, and has this otherworldly religious feel to it. I really enjoyed exploring it and trying to understand what happened to this ancient civilization. Much like last year's Demon Souls, the environment tells a story. From statues to monoliths to these weird 3D representation of historical events, the game is like a goldmine for any fan of science fiction. What I also like was the fact that Selene is not only a badass that shoots creatures from outer space, but she's also a scientist, meaning that she can physically scan objects and even pick up xenoglyph ciphers to translate the alien's language. I highly recommend opening the menu from time to time to read the item's description, you'll find plenty of fascinating pieces of lore. Obviously, that world would not be as impactful as it is without proper visuals and sound. And here Returnal delivers big time. The lighting in this game is particularly impressive, especially when combined to the crazy particle effects. Sometimes the game looks like one giant firework blowing up in your face. Enemies glow in the dark as they literally wield light as actual weapons, whether it's projectiles, swords, and whatnot. But even in its less bombastic moments, Returnal's visuals never cease to amaze and to create a moody atmosphere, one that fits perfectly with the insanely good art direction. If you're a fan of H.R. Geiger, this painter that I will not try to pronounce his name, or just Lovecraft's overall aesthetic, this will be right up your alley. From the gorgeous and scary landscapes to the remarkable and surprisingly diverse creature designs, this game is just a blast to look at. But no matter how good it looks, there's only one thing that truly matters, is this fun to play? Which brings me to the gameplay. Returnal is a game that shares multiple elements across multiple video game genres. On the surface, it is a third-person bullet hell shooter. If I could summarize the combat in this game, I would say it's like a mix of Doom and the most extreme version of Dodgeball. Taking cues from Housemark's past games, Returnal's combat is based around the idea of shooting the enemies while also trying to dodge hundreds of bullets. 
Honestly, I was never a big fan of the bullet hell concept, but I freaking love it here. When you mix in the enemy's ability to shoot walls of energy spheres to your weapon's insane particle effects, it just creates this frenzied visual scape that you must try to decode in mere seconds if you want to survive. Much like Doom, the game also greatly encourages movement with a couple of simple tricks. You must actually use your melee weapon to destroy shields and to quickly stagger enemies, meaning that you cannot just fight from afar. Add to this formula the grappling hook and you get a super fast paced and extremely addictive combat system that proved to be one of my favorites in a while. It's also very difficult to the point where some people are getting pretty frustrated over it, not because the combat themselves are insanely tough, at least in my opinion, but mainly because of how progression works in the game. You see, Returnal is not your typical third person shooter, it's also a roguelike with metroidvania elements. Before I say anything else, let's make something clear. A roguelike is a game that features randomly generated levels, some form of permadeath and non-persistent upgrades. On the other hand, a roguelite does feature upgrades persistent between runs. Returnal is kinda weird because it sits right in between those two. The game has six different biomes with a boss waiting for you at the end of each of them, except for one, but in typical roguelike fashion, the level layout, the items you find and the weapons all change every time you die. You also lose all of your stat boosts and your artifacts. Basically, you start from scratch. There are permanent upgrades, but in my opinion, these are much closer to the metroidvania aspect of the game because these upgrades don't necessarily make you stronger, they are more related to exploration or battle strategies, like the grappling hook. Weapon traits, which are kind of perks that level up as you use them, are also persistent between runs, but the actual weapon level returns to zero when you die. Therefore, even if Returnal does have permanent upgrades, we're very far from a game like Rogue Legacy, where every time you died, the game basically got easier. Here, if it does get easier, it's simply because you got better at it, which is why I think that despite its numerous roguelite elements, Returnal ends up feeling much more like a classic roguelike because of the amount of stuff you lose between runs. So if the idea of having to replay through entire levels while losing everything you've gathered along the way is terrifying to you, skip this game, you're gonna have a really bad time. But me, personally, I found this extremely well balanced and most importantly, fair to the player. Because once you reach certain checkpoints, which are usually boss rooms, you don't need to complete the entire world in subsequent runs. Shortcuts appear, allowing you to either skip boss fights or fast travel near the next boss room. My only issue with the game's roguelike mechanics is the fact that even if the different items and artifacts do change how you approach the gameplay, it doesn't drastically change how the game feels, making each run not that different from the previous. One thing I love about the Binding of Isaac is the incredible diversity between each runs. You can either fire tears of urine at enemies or become an actual demon that shoots lasers out of his eyes. Returnal doesn't have that, but even then I was never bored a single second with the game and each run was still providing enough variety to make me want to keep going. Now let's talk about what everybody has been talking about for the past couple of days. Since its release, Returnal has been at the center of a small controversy, if that's how you want to call it, surrounding its pretty unforgiving difficulty. And I agree, the game can be very difficult and if you're not someone who has a lot of patience with games, it can be extremely frustrating. It even brought back old debates about difficulty settings, like From Software games for instance with their infamously brutal games and dedication to a single difficulty setting. In the case of Returnal, people's complaints actually have multiple layers. Some gamers want an easy mode, others want more checkpoints, some people want more permanent upgrades, and the list goes on. Although what I noticed in these issues is the fact that people simply seem to want a different game than what it is. They want something that isn't a roguelike. What they want is either a roguelite or simply a third person shooter. Being overly frustrated over the fact that every time you die you lose pretty much all you've gained probably means that you should just not play these kinds of games and move on to something you actually like. Adding checkpoints would literally destroy the main gameplay loop and having an easy mode would just make no sense because you see you are supposed to die. That's the main theme of the game and it's actually part of the story itself. If it's too easy you will not die, nothing will make sense, everything will lose its balance and now suddenly the game is completely broken. Just take the permanent upgrades for example, something along the lines of what Rogue Legacy is doing. 
Adding a system like this demands major changes in a game's design, because adding more persistent upgrades to Returnal in the way it is currently built right now could lead to instances where you could just farm the hell out of the first world and then proceed to finish the game in one go, which again would completely ruin the intended experience. The only complaint from the community I've heard so far that I agree with is the implementation of a save system, meaning that you could save your current progress, leave the game behind and then come back to where you left it. When you die you would still go back to the start but at least you could play through a run in more than one sitting. Right now you can only do so by putting the console in rest mode which is really frustrating because runs are pretty freaking long in this game. Let's say you only have 30 minutes of playtime before going to work or something and want to play some Returnal. Right now it's kind of useless because the moment you close your console you lose everything. So basically you can only play the game when you have at least 2 hours in front of you. Adding the option to save and quit would just make it more convenient and the main gameplay loop would stay untouched. I think that if the developers have to listen to feedback for one thing, it's this one. But all the other complaints should not be listened to in my opinion if the developers want to stay true to the game's design goals, spirit and intentions. Returnal, Bloodborne or Dark Souls were always intended to be difficult experiences. They were designed with one very specific goal in mind. Reward player skills. Asking for an easy mode in those games would be like asking for a non-scary mode in horror games. These experiences are supposed to be challenging. Making them easy would just not be the same product anymore. You have every right in the world to not like those types of games, but just don't play them. Just like if you don't enjoy complicated movies, stop watching Christopher Nolan or David Lynch films. Roguelikes have a very specific audience and maybe those who want to drastically change how Returnal works are just not part of that audience. And that is perfectly fine. I freaking love Returnal. It's the kind of game that sort of becomes an obsession. You want to know what every item does, you want to learn the behavior of every enemy and you want to see everything that the game has to offer. It's a super addictive experience that I never thought I would enjoy as much as I did. Which is why I'm going to give the game a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to PlayStation for sending me a review code for this game. I never thought I would see this day but it actually happened. This week we also have Resident Evil Village coming out which I am so excited for, I cannot wait to jump into this world. If you want to help me out in the creation process of upcoming village related content, join the discord server, we usually have a lot of fun there so come hang out. If you enjoy what I do and want to support the channel, I have a Patreon with a lot of cool perks that you can check out in the description below. That's pretty much it and I'll see you guys later.